Hi, I'm Krista Brady, and today I'll be talking to you about the lower extremity. The lower extremity is part of the appendicular skeleton, which makes up your limbs. The first thing we'll talk about is the pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle really consists of just one bone, the os coxa. But this os coxa, it's one bone after about the age of 25 or so. Before that, it was actually three bones. So it started off as the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis bones, and those do fuse by about the age of 25. A few things you should know about the os coxa. So this big, this big uh, line along the top here is called the iliac crest, and that is part of the ili uh, part of the bone that was originally the ilium, which is why it's called iliac. And this iliac crest goes all the way to the forward or all the way to the anterior and ends in this point here that is called the anterior superior iliac spine. And I use the phrase as is to help me remember all the parts of that. Anterior, superior, it is superior to other uh, spines and it's part of the ilium, so it is the iliac and then spine is a pointy projection like this. So going towards the back then of the os coxa, we see this big roughened area that looks, it's shaped kind of like an ear. This is the auricular surface of the os coxa. And if you remember the video about the sacrum, uh, there is also an auricular surface of the sacrum and those two surfaces articulate with each other. And that is going to be on the posterior side. So the os coxa will be oriented like this if this is the sacrum, the auricular surfaces will articulate right there. All right, so now you know something to help you figure out posterior from anterior. Um, now, if we go farther along the posterior side here, we'll come to this big, huge indentation here. This is called the greater sciatic notch, the greater sciatic notch. And there's a nerve, the sciatic nerve that goes through there that if it gets pinched, causes pain called sciatica. Okay, so going towards the inferior side of that sciatic notch, we come to this pointy projection here. This is the, the ischial spine. So now we're into the part of the bone that was originally the ischium. So that's the ischium spine. And then going farther down, there's this big roughened rounded area. This is the ischial tuberosity, the ischial tuberosity. It's a big roughened part. That's your sit bones. That's where you're gonna sit on. Um, and then going a little farther along, notice this big hole here. This is called the obturator foramen, the obturator foramen. And it is uh, covered in connective tissue fascia in real life. And so it was hard to find originally. And so they called it the obturator foramen because it was obscured by fascia. And then coming uh, towards the front here, uh, we have this region, this is part of the bone that was originally the pubis. And so there's going to be a pad here that I'll show you in one minute that's called the pubic synthesis that uh, is where the two os coxi will connect together. Now you might also notice on this side, this big, huge cup here. This is called the acetabulum. Acetabulum means vinegar cup. And so this is supposed to look like a little vinegar cup. And this is actually where the head of the femur will come in and articulate, making that hip joint a very secure joint. Here we're looking at an articulated uh, pelvis. So we've got the two os coxi, one on each side. We've got the sacrum right down here. We've got a couple of lumbar vertebrae there. So a couple of things I want to point out on this articulated pelvis. The first is this pad right up here that looks uh, kind of yellow. It, this is representing the pubic synthesis, which is the joint that connects the two os coxi uh, on the anterior side. And then I pointed out previously, but I'm going to point it out again, that this joint between the os coxa and the sacrum is called the sacroiliac joint. Another thing that you'll need to know about the pelvis is how to tell a male pelvis from a female pelvis. So there are a few things that you can use to help you figure that out. 
Uh, one thing that I want to point out right away is this pubic angle right here. That's going to be narrow in a male and wide in a female. Another thing that's going to be wider in a female than in a male is this greater sciatic notch. In a female, that is very wide. In a male, that is more narrow. And then another clue is going to be uh, the flaring of the iliac crest. So in a female, that's typically going to be wider and more flared to the side. While in males, that is typically going to be narrower and more pointed vertically. So those three things will help you distinguish a male pelvis from a female pelvis. One other thing that I want to talk about with the Oscoxa. Um, so I've mentioned this a little bit, but I just want to emphasize how are you going to tell those three directions, anterior from posterior, superior from inferior, and medial from lateral. So a couple things, this auricular surface of the oscoxa that has to go towards the posterior to articulate with the sacrum. So that's a good clue right there for anterior versus posterior. For medial versus lateral, that big acetabulum that has to be pointing laterally so that the femur can come and articulate with it. Okay, so that will tell you lateral versus medial. And then what tells you uh, superior versus inferior? Well, there's a couple things you can use. One is this nice big ischial tuberosity. That's where you sit, and so that it has to be on the inferior side. So that will help you tell inferior from superior. You could also use this anterior superior iliac spine because that is on the superior side as well. So putting all those things together, I know that this particular oscoxa has to be oriented like this, and so that would be a left oscoxa because this is the lateral side there with that acetabulum. Now let's talk about the femur. The femur is the largest bone in the human body, and it is the bone of your thigh. One of the first things you'll notice about the femur is this big round part here. This is called the head of the femur, and that's where it's going to articulate with the oscoxa. That head will fit right into the acetabulum, that vinegar cup of the oscoxa, and it makes a nice secure joint with it. If you look at the front of the head here, or rather I should say, this is the medial part of the head, you'll notice this small little pit. A pit in a bone is called a fovea, and this little pit is in the head of the femur, so it's called the fovea capitis. Remember, capit means head. So, uh, moving from that head, there's a narrower, re narrower region right here uh, that is the neck of the femur, right there. And then we'll reach a couple of large rough projections. These are very large rough project projections. This one is called the greater trochanter, and the smaller one right here is the lesser trochanter. Now we're looking at the posterior side of the femur here, and one thing you'll notice on the posterior side is this rough line that goes all the way down the femur. And to me, that line has always looked a little bit like a piece of asparagus. It's called the linea aspera, the linea aspera. And that is on the posterior side. So that is one thing you can use to help you distinguish anterior from posterior. Now, since we are on the posterior, I'm going to go a little farther down and show you these big rounded projections. These rounded projections, they are rounded knuckle-shaped projections, and so they are condyles. The one right here, this is on the same side as the head of the femur, and so that is on the medial side. So that is the medial condyle of the femur. That means this other one has to be the lateral condyle of the femur. And then right in between them, there's this big, huge indentation. That is called the intercondylar fossa. So inter means between, right? And that is between the two condyles, so it's the intercondylar fossa. Now I'm going to turn this around so we can see the front of the femur a little bit more now. Um, so one other thing I'm going to point out on the femur is that these little ski slopes on either side that are right above the condyles, these are called the medial and lateral 
epicondyles of the femur. And remember that prefix epi, that does mean above. So that's why these are called the epicondyles, because they're right above the condyles. Okay, so I've already told you something that will help you distinguish anterior from posterior. That's this linea aspera on the posterior side. And something that will help you distinguish medial from lateral is that big round head that has to be facing medially so that it can articulate with the os coxa. Okay, so that will help you distinguish medial from lateral. And then what will help you distinguish superior from inferior? Well, again, you can use that head. That's a nice landmark. That has to be on the superior side because, again, that's where it articulates with the os coxa. So now, taking all those things into account, we can figure out that this is a left femur. This is the tibia. The tibia is the largest bone of your leg, your lower leg, which is the area between your knee and your ankle. And it has uh, multiple different markings that you should know. So first of all, this big, huge area up here is the head of the tibia. This entire area is the head of the tibia. On the head of the tibia, you have these rounded areas right here. They're more like depressions, and these are going to articulate with the condyles of the femur. So these are actually called condyles themselves. Here we have the medial condyle and the lateral condyle. And I'll tell you in a minute how I told whether those were medial or lateral. In between those, we have this rough projection in the center that's coming up and it looks kind of like a crown. There are multiple little pointy areas. And a crown would be on an important monarch. And so you might call a monarch your eminence. This pointy area is called the intercondylar eminence. So it is between the condyles and it is that pointy area like a crown. Okay, moving farther down, right below the head, we have this big rough area right here. This is the tibial tuberosity. And that's where the patellar ligament is going to connect that connects the tibia to the patella and uh, beyond the patella connects the large quadriceps muscles of your thigh uh, to the tibia below. So that's the tibial tuberosity. And then we have this sharp projection, this sharp line along the front of the tibia. This is the anterior crest or anterior border of the tibia. And then down at the bottom, we have this big projection here. This is called the medial malleolus. And this is how I could tell uh, which side on the top was medial versus lateral is because down here we have that big medial malleolus. You can actually feel this on yourself. If you feel the medial side of your ankle, you'll feel a big bony projection there. And that's this medial malleolus. The other bone of the lower leg is this much thinner and more delicate bone, the fibula. The fibula L ends in LA, and the fibula is on the lateral side of the lower leg. So you can use that as a clue to help you remember what side it's on. There are only two things about the fibula you have to know. You have to know the head, which is a, a slightly larger projection on one side. This is where it's going to articulate with the head of the tibia. So this is the head of the fibula. And then on the other side, this area that looks kind of like a snake head, this is the lateral malleolus, the lateral malleolus. And this one you can also feel on your ankle. If you put your hand on the lateral side of your ankle, you'll feel another bony prominence, and that is this lateral malleolus. So that's the fibula. And then one other bone that you've probably heard of before is the patella. This is what you would commonly refer to as the kneecap. And so it fits right over uh, the joint between the femur and the tibia. And a couple things that you do want to know about the patella. This pointy part right here is the apex of the patella, whereas this more rounded part up here is the base of the patella. And then on the posterior side, you do have these smooth facets these are the articular facets where it's going to articulate with the femur and tibia. So that's the patella. Next, let's talk about the bones of the ankle. These are the tarsal bones. 
This big, huge one right here is calcaneus. This is the, the bone that makes up the big bony part of your heel. Right above it, there's another large bone called talus. In front of talus is this curved boat-shaped bone called navicular. In front of calcaneus, you see a cube-shaped bone called cuboid. And then these other three tarsal bones are called the cuneiforms. So you have the lateral, intermediate, and medial cuneiforms. So this is the lateral cuneiform, this is the intermediate cuneiform, and this is the medial cuneiform. Okay, moving in front of those, we have the metatarsals that make up um, the, the largest part of your foot. And these metatarsals are named just like the metacarpals in the palm of your hand were. So we say right versus left, and then we say metatarsal, and then we um, tell which digit it's part of. So for instance, this one right here, this would be the right metatarsal one. Now, how could I tell that that was a right foot? Well, notice that it is arched more towards the uh, big toe there. And that big toe, of course, is going to be the most medial thing. So this does have to be the right foot. Okay, so if that's the right metatarsal one, what would this one be? That would be the right metatarsal four. And then moving ahead, these bones of the digits, these are all called phalanges, just like the phalanges in your hand and they're going to be named using that same naming convention that we um, use to describe the phalanges of the hand. So you have to tell me whether each bone is proximal, middle, or distal. You have to tell me it's of the, which digit it's of. So let's use this one as an example. So this is the first phalanx that we're coming to, right? So that has to be the most proximal. So this is the proximal phalanx, of the fifth digit of the right foot. So let's try another one. Uh, let's look at this one right here. Actually, no, let's look at this one right here, okay? So this one is right in the center, right? So we've got, this is a phalanx, this is a phalanx, this is a phalanx. So this one is the middle phalanx of the second digit of the right foot. And so most of those digits do have three phalanges, except for that first digit, the big toe, which again only has two phalanges. So today I've gone over the bones of the lower extremity, including the os coxa, the femur, which is the large bone in your thigh, the tibia and fibula in your lower leg, the patella, the kneecap, and the tarsals, the bones of the ankle, the metatarsals, the bones of the main foot, and the phalanges, the bones of the digits. So now go ahead and practice on your own with the labeled and unlabeled images, and then you can apply these on the lab exercises.